So let's go ahead and look at some charts and indicators. This is where you're going to be doing most of your charting, or all of your charting really, but um, let's cover some of the more important uh, sections. So for example, the drawings section. Let's start out here with this little uh, bar right here, the drawings, drop down to the drawing tools, and you get, of course, your trend lines, for example. So you can start drawing your trend lines, right, simply by clicking and then finding your support levels and letting go, and there it is. And if you want to edit that, then you just right click over here. Now, if you right click, what you want to do is edit properties. Activate is when you have a bunch of lines and you can't really grab the right one, and so you activate it and it shows you which one it is that you've activated, and then you can move it around or do stuff with it. Uh, duplicated and removing is, of course, uh, pretty self-explanatory, but in edit properties, you can change the color, you can change the style of the line. So we're going to make this teal and we're going to make it dashed, leave it at two, right? So it's more visible. So the different kinds of drawings that you can throw on here besides the trend line is, for example, the price level, which gives you, right, something like, well, there we go. This is a particular price level that seems interesting to me right here. It seems to have been resistance, resistance, resistance again, b resistance that got barely broken, resistance again, and then it sort of sort of su as support and then jumped up but didn't last very long and then immediately broke down under. So there is a, that is uh, one of the more popular tools as well, the price level. Okay, then we come over here. You can do, of course, time levels. Uh, you can add text notes if you want. You can add arrows and all of these uh, ellipses or circles and rectangles if you want. This is a rectangle that I have right here to identify a particular or potential island uh, here on Boeing, for example. And oh, let's go back to the drawing tools. And after that, then you run into parallel channels, right? Which is actually one of my favorite tools. Uh, but here is, uh, for example, how you'd use a parallel channel, not a very great use scenario, uh, case for a parallel channel, but there you go, right? And um, that is very similar to the way it works in TradingView as well. And let's see what else we got. We have regression channels, right? Regression lines and regression channels. We have Fibonacci, retracements and extensions, right? You should be familiar with these. You know, you go from your low to your high, right? And these levels should be more or less respected. There's that one level that I drew up above here, which seems to be lining up with that 23.6. But here's the 38.2. Resistance, resistance, resistance. Very good. Here's the 50. Sorry, this was support, not resistance. This is resistance. And then here's the 61.8, which served as support down here. And then, of course, it hasn't been reached. But um, it is pretty close to it because it's down to the 50. And the 61.8 is next. So let's go ahead and actually now see how to remove this, right? So you go over, you highlight the one it is, and you are going to remove that drawing. Now, if you by some sheer coincidence highlight something that you remove, and that's there's two of them right there next to each other, then it gives you this little sub menu where you can choose by way of identification, well, do you want to erase the channel or do you want to erase the price level, right? Uh, the other way to do it is to activate the drawing. Of course, it also tells you which one it is that you want to do. Now, in this case, let's just say that I want to erase the channel. There we go. So that is uh, Fibonacci retracements, uh, of course, Fibonacci extensions. And you have all of your Fibonacci tools as well. You've got the fans and the circles and the arcs, right? And you can go through all of these, uh, the spirals and uh, Pitchfork, the Andrews Pitchfork, and all of its variations. Okay, so that is for that is it for drawing tools, okay? You can also change, of course, your time frame, and you can favorite your time frame, the ones that you want. You can switch between yearly and monthly and weekly, of course, hours and minutes. If you want to modify uh, certain aspects of the price or time axis, as well as only those that apply to equities or options or futures or Forex, then you have these chart settings that you can modify. So for example, uh, here in equities, we can toggle if we want the volume subgraph on or off, right? So I toggled, toggled it off and you'll see here when I hit apply, it goes away. Okay, of course, I'm going to leave that on and it pops back up. And if you want to mess around with the other ones, such as the price or time axis as well, these are the different chart settings. And this little beaker here, or 
Erlenmeyer flask, actually, not a beaker. This Erlenmeyer flask is the studies. This is what TradingView calls indicators. So an indicator is actually derived from price or volume uh, nominal data, right, or raw data. So volume and price are raw data uh, captured at the at the exchange level, and then anything else that you derive from those by way of calculations and all of the different uh, infinite possibilities of calculations are considered studies in this case or indicators in the case of TradingView and they are listed here. You can look through these studies here and the ones with the little padlock means that those are the proprietary ones that you cannot change and then every now and then you'll run into these that don't have one which are the ones that you uh, can create yourself. And if you want to look at these you can actually click on that on the little scroll icon and then it'll tell you what the code is for that. This was one of the first examples for the ThinkScript series but you cannot do so on the proprietary ones. Well, you can see it, but you can't change it, of course, because those are proprietary. So see, they don't give you the option to save. Whereas on this one, which is the one that you created, you can actually come in here and type something in there, right? And then, you know, add or you know, apply whatever it is that you want and then just hit OK. But in this case, I'm not going to save that. And then once you find the ones you want, so for example, let's say that I want the MACD, right? So there it is. Right, you can see the RSI behind here. Now I'm going to go ahead and double click on the MACD and it throws it down here. You have three lower windows that you can stack down here. Okay, these are these. Then whatever goes in here goes into the volume subgraph. And then whatever goes in this area goes into the price uh, rectangle, which is up here. And that is where I have my moving averages. Of course, I, I usually use the 50, 100, and 200 SMAs if you want to change these. You can hit the little gear icon in here, and then you can, you know, change the value of that to whatever 333, <clears throat> and then you can, you know, you can mess with the colors and whatnot. Okay, now let's go over and look. We just added the MACD. Let's hit apply, and it should pop up down here. And there it is, right? So it looks like it's curling up in this case, Boeing, and uh, so does the price action, right? All right, so. Let's go ahead and I'm actually going to remove that. I don't use the MACD very much, but there is the RSI. And you can look through the different ones that you want, right? So if you want like uh, Ichimoku Clouds, right, you can pop that on there. If you're looking for uh, Bollinger Bands, that's there. So all of your indicators or your studies, they're all going to be in here. You just have to basically uh, sift through them and uh, find the ones that you want. And that is a wrap for the uh, studies icon. Now here, if you want to share this, you can share this and it will create a link for you, right? And you can name it whatever you want and you can share it. And the other option that you have here is patterns. Now this is really cool. I like this because you can go in here and actually tell it that uh, you want to find patterns. So let's say that you want to find a channel up, right? Hit apply and it did not find a channel up. Now, of course, because I have so many drawings on this thing, let's just say remove old drawings. Yeah, remove them. Remove drawings older than 21 days. Yeah, sure, why not? Right? Yes. That means that, of course, this rectangle is going to stay on because I just drew this like last week and this one and this one. Okay, so, but it didn't find any hmm. channels. Let's go ahead and remove that and see if it'll find a flag or some sort of a double bottom, the double bottom. Okay, hit apply. Okay, and there it is. It's telling us that this is a double bottom. It's actually a triple bottom because I could see there's one right there, two right there, and that's the third touch right there. So it's actually a triple bottom. So it's it it goes out and it looks for the patterns for you, right? Again, if you want to learn how to trade, if you want to learn how to chart, then you should really try to find these things yourself before you go and have an automated system tell you what they are, where they are. Right, so you can identify candlesticks individually. You can look for dojis if you want, right? Or uh, hammers. Uh, let's go ahead and hit apply on that. There's gotta be some of those. There we go, right? So there's a hammer, right? There's probably some hammers over there. That might be a hammer or a doji, not sure. Okay. Okay. So that's what the kind of stuff that you could do here, and you can also mess with this grid, and you can have more, uh, more things up on your chart, right? And you can pick the symbols that you want to see. If you're looking at ESE future, oh, we were looking at ESE futures. That's weird. I thought we were looking at 
I thought we were still looking at Apple stock. So there's Apple, right? And then uh, you can put SPY over here, right? And you can keep track of them uh, side by side. There's actually a few scripts where you can uh, do something like throw on the different sectors, right? And it'll show you all the sectors all at once. So we'll look at some of these as well when we go through uh, the the scripts and scans. As you can see, you can see a lot of stuff up on the screen at the same time, which is very useful uh, if you're, you know, obviously when you're trading, when you're when you're trading, you want to make sure that um, you're looking at the industry wherever your stock is at. Let me unload this. Let's go back to two by two. I believe it is this one. So it gets rid of that style. I don't like that. There we go. Okay. So you know you can do that, and uh, you can also come over here if you have more than one. Uh, one chart on this particular grid, then you can also go and maximize a particular cell. So now you're looking at cat, but you get this little uh, arrow icon thing over here, up here, where you can move, you know, left to right. And then if you know if if IXB was related to cat, then you know you might want to uh, go there. Uh, but let's say deer and cat, those are those are related, and uh, you know you you can basically toggle left to right, right, and keep an eye on uh, the different tickers that you are interested in that are related to your trade. So that, in a nutshell, is the charting tab or the charts tab. And if we switch over to our presentation, we see that we have covered basically everything that we had to cover. So I will leave it here and I will see you guys in the next video. There's a reason why Xtrades is currently the fastest growing application on the market for sharing financial ideas. With over $2.5 million paid in the last two years to contributors, users are flocking to see what trades the top traders on the leaderboard are sharing in real time. If you're looking to grow your reputation as a trader on the internet or discuss your trading ideas with other reputable investors, click the link below and get connected with the trading mentor today, completely free of charge.